Hello everyone, Richard Carlton. Welcome to another awesome day of FileMaker training. I'm here today with Jonathan Ray. Hello, Jonathan. Hey. Jonathan is one of our senior engineers. He's busy most of the time working on senior projects, um, doing some pretty advanced stuff. And then every once in a while we have to say, hey, Jay, we got to give Nick a break on the broadcasting. Can you come help a little bit? And so Jay comes and does really cool stuff, stuff that I, I, I haven't even seen today what he's doing. So I am hoping with all of you that it's going to be awesome, right? So first off, let's cover some uh, basic housekeeping. I'm going to minimize Jay just for a minute. Uh, in a, a, uh, I, I, Megan has given me a complex, all of you. For those of you who know, Megan is uh, is really, really, really awesome. She's a, a brand new FileMaker developer. She's got green hair. And so I realized that I am being out-efforted by Megan, and so I have to dial my game up a little bit. So I am now uh, changing my identity to be a Caltrans or Department of Transportation safety code. If you have questions, I'm still not as cool as Megan, but it's only so much you can do without any real hair and you're just bald, right? So there we go. All right, so moving along. Megan, yeah, you're awesome. I'm being very serious. Megan is actually truly cool. She's been around for a long time. And I, what I count on her is to remind me of when the beginners are kind of lost. Eventually, she won't be a beginner. She's learning with the rest of us. She is awesome. She's asking great questions. She's not intimidated by Kyle Williams, who babbles about JSON and custom functions. She kind of tunes that out kind of a little bit, and she asks, like, the question, like, you know, the basic question. It reminds me of what the beginners need. So... A uh, little bit of uh, housekeeping. So welcome to fmtrain.tv where we have a great group of people every day, Monday through Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 1 o'clock Pacific time. These events are recorded, and so you can watch it in high definition on YouTube or watch it in our video player, which is really awesome as well. If you want to see the upcoming broadcast schedule, you can go to fmtrain.tv up here at the top. You can come down here and press the live button right here, and you can see the upcoming schedule. Monday, Calvin Moseman will be back. Then Tuesday and Wednesday, if, if, if like the unicorns magically do what they're supposed to do and Margaret gets the editing done and we can get the book to Haley, my goal is to get you guys a book PDF cut of the book tonight or tomorrow morning sometime. And that way you can look at it over the next couple of days. If you have questions about the book, uh, comments about the book, if you want to tell me I'm smoking crack, um, it's there's a lot of commonality with the previous book, but I would say we've had to re really rewrite a lot of it because it w was last updated for 17 uh, we skipped 18 and now it's kind of a 19 and forward looking kind of thing so anyway uh, we have a two-day book party it's kind of an open q a day in here and then depending on what happens uh we're going to insert christian in here into building add-ons so we're, we're, we're what we're going to do is create a series of short videos but they're going to kind of spawn from these two days so it's going to be not the amazing cool things you can do with add-ons we don't, I don't care. I have no flips about what you can do with an add-on, okay? Right? Um, what I'm trying to work to show you is how to make an add-on at a very basic level. So this is not a Kyle Williams kind of conversation. I'm sure Kyle will be here to tell you how amazing he can do it with JSON and whatever else. But the point is that we're trying to make it, I want Megan to be able to make an add-on when we're done. So really this should be called Megan Makes an Add-on with Kyle Day, right? So two days of that. And this is good stuff. You're going to have a sample file today on this topic. So real quick, to make sure that you support your local Department of Caltrans or Department of Transportation cones, which is us, you want to make sure that we're still here day after day. Make sure you encourage people to go to fmtraining.tv, check out the bundles. Figure out which bundle is appropriate for you. And there, it's an annual training. And this actually puts money in the piggy bank so we can pay to keep all this stuff going, pay for the orange spray paint, keeps us running. That would be really great we appreciate it and the people are chiming in here they like the bundle it's awesome uh next week is awesome so we got a lot of cool stuff going on so we are doing that that's once again the color here watches it out people think it's a video problem i get all that that's legitimately stupidly orange head is what that is uh crazy kind of stuff so uh let's switch over to jay today jay's gonna smile you have to remind yourself to smile jay remember your dad says if you're happy don't forget to notify your face so that's Jay. Uh, what are we doing today, Jay? What is what is headless Chrome? Okay, should I should I start by sharing my screen or should yeah, I? Yeah, uh, we'll just say hi. Okay. I'm Jay. Hi, I'm Jay. All right. Hey, I'm I'm, I'm married I'm with Jay. two kids. Yep. I got a cat, and I'm happy. You know, tell us about yep. yourself. You got ten, 20, 15 seconds. Tell us why we. Who are you? Yeah. So J stands for Jonathan Ray, and um, I've been in the FileMaker game since I was. A teenager kind of mentored uh, by Richard here uh, since 2004 so go back quite a ways and uh, today 
we were going to introduce a tool that I definitely wasn't familiar with, and we've been around a, a while in FileMaker. So it's rare that you find a tool that you never heard of, but uh, this is one of them, and uh, it does come in handy. So I'm looking forward to sharing it today. Jay is like a very old Megan. Right, so she, he was a b baby engineer. I remember the first time I took him out to on a project site. I think this first time I paid him, I paid him like 25 bucks an hour, just kind of like it was a one-off thing. His dad was pissed. His mom was pissed too, because I was, I mean, this is like money from like, and that was like quite a bit more than a 16 year old is supposed to make, right? So they figured I screwed him up when I did that, so, <laughs> right? And I was also there at the time that Jay stuck a squirrel in the microwave. So yes, we're not going to discuss that either. So uh, Jay, why don't you show us your computer screen and we won't discuss exploding squirrels. Yes, I know. Once upon a time, right. he was a young lad <laughs> and then and things happen. And what happens, what happens in the microwave in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to open this thing up. Um, and before I do, you're probably wondering what in the world headless chrome is. And quite simply, it is a way to run, <clears throat> a way to run Google Chrome, the Google Chrome web browser in the background. So it, it is, it's an invisible web browser, a web browser without a head, hence the, the word headless. So it's doing a process, but you can't see it. It's just doing it in the background. And that does come in handy in a specific case. So that's what we're gonna take a look at here, okay? As I double click this file, um, a couple things. One, you have to open it in 19 for this to work. And not only 19, but the most recent release of 19. All right, so um, the, the reason we're even showing a list of presidents here is because it's a great example of what we're trying to do. It's a, uh, it's a good, good sample data. So um, you see here uh, on the lower portion of the screen, this is a web viewer. Uh, I, I don't know how you would build this in FileMaker without some sort of custom chart. So let's start with that, that this is something you can't do natively in FileMaker, or if you could, it would just be bizarre how you could get that done um, when you could do it with a web viewer. All right, so that's, that's point number one, where web viewers can be helpful, and it's scary if you've never done HTML and it kind of seems like you don't want to wade into the to the deep end, but really, if you give it a try and you you tear apart this sample file, you'll see how it's how it works. And I've done a couple uh, videos in the past here um, about how to integrate with Google Charts that type of thing. That will get you started. But first things first is that we're talking about a web viewer uh, in this video. Okay, and it does it work on Windows? And it works on Windows, okay. and that segues into what we need to discuss next. So. Let me pull up a, a web browser. I want to show you what I'm using first. So this is a Google chart. It's a timeline. You see here, here's our uh, timeline of, of presidents that they, um, that they give as a sample, okay? But you'll notice that what I have going on looks different, right? This is not like the sample they give. I have modified it. Uh, let's just say, for instance, we, we needed this this ability to mark whether a person is deceased or not. So I have these slash lines through uh, certain bars. You see that? Whereas uh, some of these most recent presidents don't have slash lines through them. I needed, let's say, uh, to put slash lines in there. Let's say that's a requirement from the customer. They wanted something that is close to the Google timeline, but they want something that's a little bit more customized. Well, that's possible, okay? And you can see that it's possible here, but here's the big catch. Let me show you. Here is a, um, uh, an instance of parallels on, on my Mac. I wanna show, show you what it looks like on a Windows computer, okay? And this is Windows 10, but it doesn't really matter what operating system it is. It will, okay? This is the same screen we just looked at, but as you can see, these boxes are not slashed out. Same HTML code, same everything. And so sometimes this is so frustrating when you, you build something out and it's working great, and then you look at it in a um, web viewer on a PC, 
and all of your hard work is gone. It just, it doesn't look the same. And the reason is that still in FileMaker 19, FileMaker is using the Internet Explorer uh, browser rendering engine. And uh, many modern companies have abandoned Internet Explorer altogether and haven't even bothered trying to um, support it, okay? Uh, because it's old and it's it's being abandoned uh, soon, and sometime in the next couple of releases, I'm I'm betting that the uh, FileMaker will go to uh, Microsoft Edge or something for their rendering. But right now, if you want your your code in a web viewer to display properly, you still have to have it be able to support Internet Explorer, which is a major pain. Okay, so what? Uh, this this is our test case. We want to be able to generate this web viewer, but the way it looked uh, when I when I showed you on my Mac with the with those slash marks, we want to generate that on cr cross platform, be able to take a screenshot and to put it into a container field in FileMaker. That's the end goal, and I'm going to walk you through the steps to get there. Sure. Okay, so let me continue on here. I'm going to take a screenshot just to show you what this will do. I'm going to specify I want the width to be 700 for this screenshot. 700 pixels. Okay, and I'm going to export that and show you what it looks like. Aha! Uh -huh. And we have our slash marks like we wanted, like I showed you on the Mac, except that we just did this on a PC and it didn't use the native rendering engine that FileMaker has. It used Google Chrome's uh, rendering engine. That's the trick here. We want something uh, that's going to render on a modern web browser. We can't do it inside FileMaker. So we are secretly in the background sending it to Google Chrome, an app that's installed, and saying, hey, Google Chrome, we want you to take this code and render it the way it should be rendered in a, in a modern web browser, take a screenshot for us, and then we're gonna put it back into FileMaker. And that's how that's how we do it. I have a okay, question, so. I have a question, Jay. So, so, so eventually, and Claris have been talking about this for a long time, that they're going to update their engine on Windows to use Chrome, uh, the Chromium rendering engine, right? So mm -hmm. eventually IE goes away. But if they stay on the track they're doing, they're going to have Safari, some sort of ver version of Apple's rendering engine on the Mac. They're going to have this this Chromium engine on Windows, which will be a lot better than IE, but it won't necessarily be identical. And so mm -hmm. you're going to run it. I could see if you had like, a, like say you have a customer's mission critical, like, like uh, you're building a $100,000 project and the CEO is of this company wants to see some chart. And I don't know that I'd want to hang my hat on a diff any differences between Safari and Chrome. Maybe it's not an issue today, but you could see Apple going, blah, 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 or Google going, blah, 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 blah. We're, we're, the, we're, the, we're, we're the standard. No one else is standard. You shall all follow us or be banned into the wilderness, right? And mm -hmm. so I could see coding your apps to use Chromium, period on either platform and that way you would have consistency right yes Kinda? you would yes. be absolutely um guaranteed consistency with the with using chrome both on mac and pc i kind of again like that because that takes yeah. some of the light because the liability uh, yeah. with the web viewer has always been this oh I, we talk about it because because larry had the question earlier in the week um Okay, so that's okay. We're gonna to get to Ed's question in a second here, uh, but Larry had the Larry from the Marines had the question earlier. He, did, he was trying to understand why a web viewer was relevant. I think we answered at the time. We reshot a movie on this that's being worked on. It's specific to beginners understanding why web viewers are valuable. Um, but the the light. So then with FileMaker 19, one of the there were two liabilities with web viewers. One was that communication between FileMaker and the web viewer was sketchy prior to 19. It kind of mostly worked unless it didn't. Um, kind of fragile. Once again, you don't want to hang the CEO's progress report on it, <laughs> on a big contract with that, right? Like one of my engineers doing work for Apple. I don't want some VP at Apple looking at FileMaker and seeing it malfunction. And so this, 
So with 19, you get the, the communication fix. And with chrome, headless chromium or chrome or whatever we're calling this, that would take out the potential fragility between, assuming that Google maintains good synchronization of features and, and rendering between Mac and Windows, it would almost guarantee that you would be, that that I, I, I that has a lot, from a guy who doesn't want to have my, I don't want the phone to ring and people yell at me, um, that has a lot of appeal. Um, the question is, Ed says, can I use it to view a live web page? Until the National Weather Service update their live radar, it, web, uh, it had uh, it had it working in a web viewer. Now it won't. You'd have to. I would. I would. Um, Ed, I'd look at. Is that Mac or Windows? If it's an IE thing, then you would use this, and it might actually work on Windows. Um, yeah. So basically, the the National Weather Service has a website. They updated their website. It broke rendering on Internet Explorer 11. I would take what you're seeing here today, the sample file which you've already posted, and Figure out how to re uh, have have this Chromium render that web page for you. I think I think you will get a lot farther with that. Moki says this is a comment on Discord. It says sounds like an outside plugin rendering engine that you can get a screenshot or PDF of. So yeah, there's a, obviously a little bit of a conversation going here uh, over here, Jonathan. But I mean, Moki says it's it's. Um, Moki says it doesn't replace the web viewer engine. Um, web viewer engine. That's a really loose term, and I'm not even clear what you're referring to, Moki, right, in terms of processes, right? So, anyway. Um, uh, yeah, and I, I think as I go along, this will maybe clear It may make more sense, uh, yeah. So I'm going to let this, like, sit for the moment, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Because I know there's a, there's a bunch to get through in just one session, and so we want to uh, fit keep going. all this Yeah, in. I'm sorry. That's fine. Go ahead. So keep keep okay. motoring let along. Me, let me close this down. I'm going to switch to my Mac environment because I'm more used to that. And then I am going to open this back up. Okay. So let's uh, jump in here. And I'm going to hide that and open up Terminal. Okay. This scares folks too. But this is – I want to show you what Google – or um, headless Chrome is at a very basic level, and then I'll show you how to integrate it with FileMaker. Okay, so the first little command I'm going to just copy paste in. We could hand type this in. All right, we're saying that I want to talk to Google Chrome. Hit enter, and then we're so that little line there. We're saying where the app is living in my applications folder. I want to talk to it. And when I hit enter, it said, okay, uh, what do you want to say to it? And let's do a, a real basic um, headless Chrome command. And you can see this right here. I just pasted it in. I'm saying, hey, Chrome, operate in headless mode. And this is uh, something that you need to put in there. Uh, and then I'm saying, I want to take a screenshot of, uh, and I want to save it to my desktop. I want to name it screenshot.png. And I want to take a screenshot of uh, rcconsulting.com, the website. Okay, so that's our main website. And it thought for a second, and then it saved it. Let me show you what it looks like. It saved it right here as a screenshot. Okay. And those two lines of code were what it took to uh, make a screenshot of a particular website and basically what we're doing in that sample file we're doing the same type of thing we're we're telling chrome to take a screenshot for us of a particular web page that we generate okay okay so i have a question so is it is yeah. it actually a screenshot when you're looking at this is it a, a dynamic and interactive or is it actually a screenshot screenshot um well let me let me show you this i think this will this will help a little bit we're going to tell it here. Here's a little bit more advanced version of what we just did. So I'm saying take a screenshot, but I'm specifying the pixel width. I want it 700 by 500. And it's more or less what you what would happen if I hit uh, Command Shift 4 and said I want to take a screenshot of that. OK. OK. It's mimicking that behavior. And so it's saying, I want you to take a screenshot of whatever page I'm telling you about. 
and I want it this size. So you can get pretty specific is what I'm trying to say. All right, so if I hit enter, and then I open up the screenshot again, you can see that it lopped it um, more than it was. Yep. Okay, yep. Uh, 700 by 500. And this thing here makes the resolution a factor of two. So it, it blew it up bigger. So it okay. gives you some, some options there. All right, here's another option that not only can you do a screenshot, but I'm telling it now to print to PDF and I'm giving it a website to do so. I hit enter, it thinks about it, and then I can go here and there's my screenshot. Mm. It printed to P actually a PDF. It prints the entire page and creates a PDF for me. Okay? Um, so there's not a ton that you can do with headless Chrome, but what you can do is very valuable to us, taking screenshots and printing to PDF. It also lets you debug um, JavaScript and so forth, but that's that's not what we need here. We're just using a very simple screenshot command. So as long as your content is not dynamic, so say for example, signature capture, right? Signature mm -hmm. capture is very dynamic. We wouldn't use this to do the signature capture because we need the, the web viewer to be dynamically interacting with our finger, for example, right? Or our okay, so good, so good point. What, uh, what Headless Chrome also allows you to do is do what's called Head Full Chrome. <laughs> it, uh, it pulls up a web browser and lets you do something in it. Really? And then, um, so, so it's, like, uh, it's like a web viewer, like, like in FileMaker, but in a new browser page. Mm. So, so that's one way of trying that out. But I think what you're saying is, you know, you'd want to do this on a mobile device, and I'm not sure how that, how well, that would work. Well, not even. I tested well, it here. one of the big things with the web viewers is that we have this web viewer from Key Logic is a good example. They have a signature capture that brings signature capture to any FileMaker client that has a web viewer, which means mm -hmm. that it. So before signature capture was limited to iPhones and iPads, Claris never really executed it everywhere which was kind of like a kind of a typical moment where they do partly somewhere where it was easy for them to do and then they kind of walk off and forget about it and so we want signature capture on windows devices with touch screens we want them on macs with big track pads or use a mouse we want it on android devices and so that is a web viewer that we put on the screen. It's got dynamic JavaScript in it, so it's dynamically doing stuff. You know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can even have charts that are dynamic that spin around and flip around and do stuff. This, if it's a screenshot, it's not dynamic. That's my point, right? So it's 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 giving us a screenshot, which is super valuable. Right, it's a still image. It's a still image, not a interactive dynamic experience. Okay. So it has That's limited correct. limited application, but it could be very useful. And the screenshotting thing actually is very useful. Very, very mm -hmm. useful, yeah. Right. Okay, so up to this point, we've seen, I, I've just given it our main corporate website. I said, go to this website and take a picture. But that's not altogether helpful for what we're trying to do. And I wanna show you um, uh, something here. I'm gonna just create a, a very simple web page. This is BB Edit. And for a web page, this is as simple as you can get, really. I mean. I'm saying, give me HTML, and I'm saving a couple lines of text. Okay. Okay. So very, very simple web page. I'm going to save it as test.html. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to open it up, show you what it looks like. Let's try that again here. Okay. Okay. So here's my test. Hello okay. world. Headless does not mean heartless. Okay, so here's my custom HTML. It's that simple to create an HTML page. It does not have to be hosted, meaning this, I mean, if you try to type this address in here, it's not going to bring up my web page I just created. Right. I created a custom HTML web page, and what I can do is, in, um, in Headless Chrome, I can tell it to... Let me paste it in here. I can tell it to do the same thing we just did up here, 
except with the HTML page I just created. Okay. I want to take a screenshot of that page that I just created. So I'll hit enter. Okay, and then here is the screenshot. And that's you what seven hundred by five hundred, because that's what our was that still in the settings there? Is that what we Yes, did? and and I told it to uh, enlarge du it by double, a factor of two. Double to yeah. double large, okay. All right. Well, this I, is I actually. I think you see where I'm going with this, right? Well, I, we I, are... it's hurting my head because there's a lot of possibilities of where this could be useful, right? So. Right. Right. So in in our example, though, the basic idea is that we are creating a web page of this, local on my computer, and then we're running a command like this from FileMaker. We're saying, "Hey, Google Chrome, run this same command. Take a screenshot of." The, the HTML that we just created. Okay, okay. so we're, we're saving this HTML somewhere, telling Google Chrome to take a screenshot and then putting it back into so FileMaker. You, so you actually export the, so the HTML, the HTML, that the code that makes this work is probably in a text field somewhere, right? Yes. And then you export it out to the hard drive. I'm going to draw a little hard drive, a little round circular hard drive. And then we tell Google Chrome to take a screenshot of that and then drop it back uh, as a as a PNG screenshot, okay. Exactly. But, exactly. But you could do, I mean, you could you could tell it to open up an eye. Uh, wow. Okay. So headless means you don't see it. So could so like if we have the National Weather Service, say it's a public website. So I'm going to go back to Ed's example. Ed has like the sure. National Weather Service, and he doesn't like now. Of course, he might want this the weather to the stuff to animate. But let's pretend that Ed doesn't care about animation. He just wants a screenshot you could direct it to a public website and have it get a screenshot from there too correct that's correct mm. and uh, what uh, headless chrome also allows you to do is what's called web scraping so if you wanted to go to a website and scrape a bunch of say news articles from usa today mm. and import them into filemaker you could totally do that with this yeah, and then it's obvious, I'm going to state this for the record, but Russell from Los Angeles saying, yeah, it's obvious that uh, it's a requirement that Chrome is installed. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, it has yes. to be installed. I mean, it, it would be automatically installed if you're using an a Android-based operating system. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you were, I guess we haven't tried this on WebDirect on a Chromebook, but theoretically this would kind of more or less work there too. So I mean, we had some sort of, if the command line is supported there. So, yeah. Uh, is is uh, David Angel says so is Google Chrome CLI well, command line interface yes. so yeah that's yeah. kind of what we're talking about here yeah yeah it's more or less like if you run it in terminal you know how we can do these uh, all these geeky people can do commands in the terminal right and do this and sudo sudo this and that they have all these things can you increase you can the, the text size here by so, the way for us Jay can you increase that keep going uh, can you increase? I don't yeah, know. there we go. Uh, yeah, like make Is it. Is that like, better? Give me more. Yeah, I like like that. That's much better. Okay, great. So then yeah. keep going to, talking about your stuff. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, and so Google Chrome accepts the same types of uh, commands like this. Not not identical commands, but they accept some commands like, "Hey, take a screenshot for me," or you know, um, increase it by a factor of two and do this and that. Uh, it's not a ton of commands you can do, but they do have some. All right, so I'm going to post a couple other links here uh, that are being batted around. Uh, we've got a lot of good engagement here from the Discord side. Um, David Angel points out, and Moki's pretty active here, uh, that you that there's a uh, peter.sh, there's a website here, which has a list of, I guess, all the switches. When they say switches, it means all the little options you can flip to do cool things with... Uh, so list of Chromium command line switches. Beverly, Peter Beverloo. I'm not sure that's even a real name. But uh, actually, that's a big, long list. Hang on one second, Jay. So I don't know if you've seen this, Jay. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can go to Discord here briefly. And I can hit this from this link right here. And I pasted this other places just now. But this is a list of all the switches that we have access to. And this is a long list of stuff. Obviously, Jay... Um, it just probably touched. Uh, <laughs> uh, just yeah, I mean, we're we're scratching the surface, surface of, what of what it can, can do. do, right? Yeah. So, I mean, partly a be the best webinar that we create, it's educating either advanced people 
We're educating beginning people. The beginning people, the Megans of the world, the Larrys of the world, or wherever you guys are at, I'm not talking down to you. Um, this is to imagine imagine what you might be able to could do with FileMaker and the kind of things you can do. So when someone says, can you take a screenshot? Right, and you're like, yes, we can, and it's not even that hard. Um, advanced people are going to go, oh, give me this list, and they're going to sit here, going. they're going to be on the bathroom going somewhere, doing some reading in the bathroom, and they're going to be reading this list trying to imagine all the insanely cool things they can do with this. So this is a great, the best kind of we a live stream because everyone is benefiting from this, um, including Kyle, who didn't, uh, I don't think, had a full knowledge of this one, although it makes sense. It's right up his alley. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like us uh, handing you a hammer and saying, here's what a hammer kind of does. But we're not telling you everything you can do with the hammer. I mean, it's a yeah. It has it's a long a tool list of hammering. Got it. Pings. Oh, I'd yep. love. I'd love to be able. Can you run a ping command straight out of uh, Google Chrome? Hang on one second here. Ping. Ping. Ping force reduction. Because one of the things we've been asking for a long time was uh, the ability to um, on your FileMaker solution. People say, "Oh, it's slow," right? And I've been asking Claris for a get function that says get ping against an address and it comes back with 10 pings or we say the number of pings and it comes back and gives us a dilemma that data and so we can tell if someone's reporting our filemaker solution is slow they can press a button and see what their latency is in milliseconds that to have that i've asked for this like three or four different times from people and people are like i don't know how to do it right that would be huge because in your solution then you would be able to i would put that in the starting point people say Oh, it's slow. Well, then hit this button and tell me what you see. Well, it says 300 milliseconds. Okay. You've got a problem because your FileMaker server is either too far away from you or people are downloading videos and they've filled up your uh, internet connection. So um, as soon as I saw ping, I got, I got excited because it's one of those things when you're dealing with customers to be able to explain to them, like... Like I didn't code it slow. Now, if it's set, if you if they say it's slow and you're getting 30 or 40 milliseconds, then probably you've got a problem with your code. Bad, you know, you're not using lean design, mandatory lean design. You're not using it, right? So, um, yeah, it's a really good indicator. The problem I saw ping. I don't see the ping I need, but that would be really cool. So sorry, I'm just getting greedy for myself here. Yeah, no, no problem. So I want to show you one thing. I think this will make more sense to some people. If I come here to preferences, this is where all the code is set up, and I want to go through it in brief. But let me let me show you something. The compiled HTML, okay? What are all um, like as one big HTML page is this right here? So I took the HTML that this preferences layout output, like this this whole web web viewer here. This whole web viewer is this code here. Okay, and so I copy pasted this code into an online web browser, and I run it. I mean, that's what it's going to create. Okay, so um, what I'm trying to say is, once you have the the HTML code, you can take this here and save it uh, as an HTML page, right? So I can come here to BB Edit again and hit save, and let's call it test2.html, okay, and I'll come to, I'll find it real quick, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to double click on this thing, and there it is, okay, we just saved our HTML, we just grabbed the, the code that runs this web viewer, we created a simple text file, with the um, with the ending .html on it, and that's what it rendered. And so what we're trying to do here is in FileMaker, we're saying save a file with that code, and then tell Google Chrome to open it up in the background, take a screenshot with the um, with the window at a particular size, and then FileMaker is going to retrieve that screenshot from wherever we saved that. Does that make sense, boss? Uh, yeah, it makes perfect sense. I was muted here. Um, there's a different. These guys are off in the weeds about PSOS. I want to keep it simple at this point, so sure. I'm not gonna. Um, but yeah, uh, keep going. You're fine. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, get into. I'm gonna pop the hood a little bit and show you how this works. 
And up until this point, it has been conceptual, right? We've shown you here's the ideas um, to actually make this work. It, it's a little bit involved, but once you understand the basic concepts, uh, it's okay. So in previous videos, we've explained this little tab idea here. And this, this whole process allows you to create an HTML page. Okay, so in a previous video, I did a Google chart integration. It's the same idea. It's a little bit more involved in this case though. Okay, so I have a basic HTML um, template, so to speak. And here is where my CSS goes. That's the custom style sheets. That, that's what allowed me to do the little slash marks, the deceased thing here. Uh, that was not standard in the Google chart code that they supplied us with. So there's a couple things I did that are custom, right? Hence the custom style sheets. So I added this legend up here, okay? And some of this code, this custom style sheets, tells exactly how this legend should appear. This is blue, this is red, and so forth. And so that's where all that code goes in the HTML. And then, so th this is a placeholder, these three stars and CSS and three stars. This gets replaced later on in this, uh, let's go to field definitions. This HTML calc, you see that field? Yep. It is replacing or substituting, uh, to, to use a better term, substituting this placeholder with this CSS field which is um, in this tab here. And then this JS, see that in the background? That's being substituted with whatever is in the JS tab here, stands for JavaScript. Okay, so it's just easier to read doing it this way. Um, you, you could, if you really wanted to, have one big string of text uh, like, like this up here but that, that is very difficult to read, at least for me. Let's see. Uh, Russell said, can FileMaker host Google Maps? Can't FileMaker create a container that hosts any kind of player? Uh, yeah, can't, cre can't create a container. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, Russell, yeah, absolutely. There's no question about that. So we use containers or web viewers. I mean, the web viewer and a container are two different things. So web viewers basically are doing... HTML slash JavaScript for the most part. Uh, containers are storing documents, for lack of a better way of putting it. So when we, when I when we have our video player and we're showing videos, um, we are doing that through a web viewer, if that makes sense. So it's ones like document storage, generally, and, and the web viewer is for mostly for the most part code, like HTML code or JavaScript code, right? If that makes sense. So this is the text, but if you render this out it, it, into a web viewer, um, then you're going to see something like this. This is the web viewer, but this is the this is like a text field here, right? So and then mm -hmm. it renders that yeah. out. Now in our case here, this I don't know if Jay in this specific case this is a screenshot or not, but the point is that this can build this, but then mm -hmm. we want to screenshot it, and so then then if it's a screenshot. Are you putting the, I mean, I guess you could reference a screenshot in a web viewer, but most of the time I would put a screenshot back in a container just because I probably won't right. store it, right? Right, and that's what we're doing here. This this little thing, this box, is a container field, in a FileMaker container field. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and take apart this uh, screenshot script, and that's mm -hmm. really the last thing to do here. Okay, so I'm going to hit uh, scripts. As you could probably imagine, there are two separate processes, one for Mac and one for Windows. On the Mac, we are running an Apple script, actually. It's a very simple Apple script because it's the Apple script is basically doing exactly this. You know, uh, like these two lines, that's what the Apple script is doing. And so let's show you where that's set up. In preferences, here's where I put the Apple script. Okay. Uh, and you don't really have to even know what that means, but the this is the first line, like in our terminal, our first line, and this is the second line. And in FileMaker, uh, if you're not aware, in FileMaker you can do 
perform Apple script, right? That's a that's one of the script step options. And so, and of course, so how so how'd you solve that with Windows? Because there's no Apple script on Windows. So on Windows, the Windows version of this is the send event. Okay, ah. so the um, the command is fairly similar. So this is what it looks like on a Mac. This is the syntax on a PC. So we're saying, hey, Google Chrome in the C drive, okay, um, do this command, take a screenshot of whatever it is, right? And, and so it's, it's very, very similar, almost identical. But the trick is you have to tell the command prompt in on a PC to do it, whereas on a Mac you're telling the terminal to do it. That's the cross-platform ability there. Okay. Cool. So these two scripts are very very similar. Yeah. But um, with, it, with the exception of the send event versus right. the perform Apple script. Well, a moment ago, I people were talking about Apple script, and I'm not a big Apple script fan, primarily from the reason that. Apple script doesn't ex exist on Windows, but if you have an equivalent that works on Windows, then I don't care. What I what I gro greatly dislike in the world, and Jay knows this, he's been around me for a bunch of years, is I don't like a solution that only works on one platform. Okay, um, I've been there when people did stuff for Windows and Mac was excluded, and I aggravated that. And when Apple returns the favor to the Windows side of the folks, um, I dislike that as well because I live in a world where it's not Apple versus Microsoft, it's my customer, and I take care of the customer. And almost every customer has a mix for the most part. So, yeah, I, uh, yeah. yeah I'm not a big, uh, like, so, uh, you know, Claire's running around, oh, we got Core and machine learning, blah, 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 except it doesn't work on anything except just a limited set of machines. And I'm like, no, because I, I take care of my customer. I'm not going to induce a technology that causes my customer problems. So, yeah, there we go. All right, so let me uh, step through this real quick, and you'll sh I want to show it to you in action. So I'm going to hit this button, and I'm going to also pull up the data viewer here, and you'll see the, the variables being set as we go. So I'm going to step through it one by one. It grabs the width that I told, told it to, so I can specify a width of like 200 pixels. But in this case, I set it at 700. So you can see it's at 700 here. There's a check to say if the width is missing, then it stops you dead in your tracks. It says, hey, you gotta fill this in and it halts, okay? So this is what we call a sanity check. Make sure that the thing we're counting on is there, all right? It goes and this is my way, um, this is a little trick that I do and other people can do things different, but this is how I do a hidden window. Um, I call the window dev and um, I put a, a big height, I'll show you why later, and the width that we specified, but I put it, uh, the position is minus 5,000 and left is minus 5,000, meaning it's way over in no man's land, you can't see it. So it's a new window, but a hidden one, okay? And so let's do that. And you saw right away there that it triggered a script. And that's part of the JavaScript code. Um, and that's that's the reason you need 19.1.2. It triggered a FileMaker script from the code itself. And that script is giving us um, the, the position of the, the bottom of that chart. And that's gonna come in useful. Okay, and then I pause it for a second. This is important, it says, if the get system platform, meaning is uh, is minus two, or if you're on a Windows computer, do this. Otherwise, do this thing here. And so because we're on a Mac, this is calling a JavaScript function within that web code. Um, and there, there's two functions, one for the PC, one for the Mac. I'll show you that in a second, but it's that new um, new FileMaker dot perform JavaScript um, piece of code in there. Okay, so we're telling the web viewer to perform a function in there. Okay, I hit perform JavaScript. It triggers a script, 
And this, this is the script parameter. So imagine we're, we're inside this web viewer, it's hidden. And we said, hey, perform this function. And what we wanted it to do is pass us all of the HTML within that web viewer. And that's what that is. It's passing it to us as a script parameter. Okay. And then, yeah, so if I open this up, you see, this is the huge bit of uh, HTML. This is the whole chart that it generated. It passed it back to us in a in the form of a script parameter. This captures the uh, Apple script. Okay. Um, this sets some other variables, like the place I want to save the file to. In this case, I'm saving that HTML file that we're going to take a screenshot of in the temp folder. I don't want to clutter up the, uh, the desktop right now, so I'm saving it in a hidden folder that you're not going to see. It's all done in the background. And then later on, right here, that's where I'm telling it to take a screenshot of the file I'm about to create, okay? So right here, I say create data file. That allows me to create a .html file with the text I just specified. And then I'm gonna open it up. And this is all new, I believe, to 19. I don't think it was introduced. Oh, the right file, that was 18. That was 18, uh, I just wrote my HTML to that file. 18, okay. Yeah, I believe it. it's 18, yeah. So at this point in the script, gotcha. So at this point in the script, I have opened a hidden window, um, rendered my chart, and had the chart pass the HTML back to me. And then I captured my Apple script. I saved a path, and I've created an HTML file using what was passed back to me. Now it's time to tell the terminal, hey, I want you to use Google or headless Chrome to take a screenshot of that file we just made. Okay, we, tell, we do the Apple script. Is it gonna work? It's thinking. Yeah, the internet's a little slow right now with everything going okay. on. I mean, because you and I are on the same network here. Gotcha. Okay, so it did the Apple script. It didn't have an error. Um, if it did have an error, there's a, a thing we display. It's like, hey, make sure that Google Chrome's installed, right? Because that would be a reason for an error. Okay, and then what do we do? Uh, if we're on this people layout, then it closes that dev window in the background. It selects the current window. Let me close this here. It's gonna go to this field here. Go to field, insert picture, boom. Okay, and then I have it doing a set field where it gives you the timestamp of when you created that screenshot. And then it comes in here and deletes that, that file out of the temp folder, mm. and then commits the record. Oh, and then it goes back to the container field that selects it. And we're done. I have a, I, so there's, we don't have a really hard stop here, so we can answer questions and whatever we want to do. I do have a question here. So my more immediate interesting use of this would be to, and there's a lot of ways of doing this, but it's, this one seems pretty reliable. If the entire, if this entire technology is based upon making sure that Google Chrome is installed, that's kind of a pretty easy one because about half mm -hmm. the people have it and the other half the people probably should have it. Even though I use Safari a lot, I have to have it because every once in a while Safari just loses its mind. And that yeah. happens with Chrome. Chrome loses its mind. Safari doesn't work, but or works, but Chrome doesn't. Um, can we use this uh, variation of this? It seems to me to just uh, a customer says, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. I'm on this screen and it doesn't it dog ate my homework. Could we get, just have it as a bug thing, capture the current screenshot in FileMaker yes. and save that? Um, that's a good question. I don't know if it will take a, if it can take a screenshot of the screen or if it is limited just to the web page. I'm, my gut tells me it's limited to the web page. Yeah, back in the old days, I mean, if some of you remember this, you've been around a long time. Um, yeah, I know it's a screenshot versus a browser, but an application can trigger the screenshot. So 
the question is that it used to be like you could go into like if you were just on a layout and you weren't in any field or anything you could go up and hit the copy like just go up under just for fun i haven't seen this in a long time this but remember i go back a long ways hit copy okay what do we have on our clipboard just out of curiosity Let's see here I'm it's probably it it's empty. probably an image okay what is that was the focus in there okay i think it didn't copy anything and okay. it used th this is what it was okay copy co do me a favor just copy this text right here up there or something like that yeah. Um, and this, let's, let's, re, re, let's hack that text. Just do something. Okay. Uh, let's do... Right. So... But then go back and do your copy again. I'm trying to see if it's changing what it's doing. Okay. Now what? No. no. Oh, it, actually it did. I mean it... Oh, so, so do me a favor. Close that again. Try it again. Weird. Make sure you click over with nowhere. Click like, like into dead space on FileMaker. Make sure it's really not in focus at all. Oh, yeah, because we were in you're, the You're field. in the container, so <laughs> click that. Now, try yeah. kick cut. Now, do that. Now, see what we get. Because back in the old days, this would be give you a, a snapshot of the layout. See, that's text. interesting. Gives you some text. Go to it. Try to paste it into a container. Like, just create a new record if this is a container over here. Mm -hmm. uh, paste it. Just create a new record and just stick. Try to paste uh, let's see if you can create. Okay, just paste in there. See what you get. Now it's this text. Used to be you could get a screenshot. Um, it was a way of jury rigging previews and things like that. So anyway, uh, the container selected says copy. Yeah, I know we caught that. The trick is is to figure this out. So I'm just trying to figure about other ways of like anything else. I go to sleep at night trying to figure out how to take something that Kyle said and hack it into something useful. Same with Jay. Same with all these folks that we have around here. It's the benefit of a broadcast like this is it opens you up necessarily. You may not need this specific situation here, but you really might want to trigger a thought about how you might use it a different way. And if you, one of you hacks this, you have the sample files, we've given the links here. Um, basically the short version of the conversation is that if you hack something and make something different that we would like to see, send it to me. We'll include it in a conversation. Uh, Leland says, it looks like TK answered it. Leland said, RC, do you condone or disagree with the use of single letter parameters or variables? Um, I prefer, so this, it, it's kind of an off topic question, but it's good. Um, so like when we're doing variables, like if you have a variable on screen and it's dollar, say dollar, dollar, and I might want, I might use the word counter or something like that, but if you just said like C, right? Um, the whole idea is that uh, if I do a bunch of stuff, okay, here's here's your test. If you define a bunch of, it doesn't matter what it is, fields, layout, scripts, variables, doesn't matter, okay? And you build it, and then you go away a year, and you come back a year, and you look at it. Is it obvious to you what you're doing? Did you document it? I, I use more expressive names, so it helps with the re-learning and re-understanding of what the heck I did. So I don't like use like single value names. Um, back when I learned to program, in basic way back in 1984 um, uh, you know we would the first thing we did was x equals x plus one right um, because that was a variable and it was a, or is dollar x or whatever it was right and so um, but then I kind of got the file maker and I started realizing that we'd build something someone would pay you to build it then they'd pay you to come back and fix it in a year and it's really hard to come back and figure out what you did if you can't like retrace the breadcrumbs you left breadcrumbs and read me and little comments in your scripts right so yeah that's what I, I like about that um, yeah so net lobster points out long variable names are useful but you run the risk of misspelling them they don't misspell them right so that would be my simple thing that's what I normally do is I don't retype them I, I type it once and then I copy it and stick it like in a little post-it note somewhere and so as I'm going through my computer I have to reference I copy it and stick it back in I don't try to retype it because it's I suck at typing consistently ask you I mean you guys watch me type in here it's like blah, 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 blah. would you like to go out you know have a pizza and I end up asking you know something inappropriate blah, 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 blah. like my cat my cat typing on the keyboard the other day one of my engineers was Replied back, you knew my cat was on the keyboard. He's talking but to the kitty, right? Like, okay. Moki says, Jonathan, have you tried using Headless Chrome for scraping the DOM? Yep, that's one of the, uh, yeah, let me pull this up again. I, I'm glad you said that. Over here, Google has some getting started with Headless Chrome, and you can just Google that. Um, Google, you can... 
I realize the Chrome example and the first thing will be this website here. And one of them is being able to um, do scraping and scraping the DOM elements of a HTML file is one of their primary things. Okay. I what, thought what, that what would is... be more advanced than what we're trying to go for here. And I think I would have lost some people. Okay. Well, I have a question. What is a, okay, you go back to that. What is a DOM, DOM? I mean, it's, to me, it's a, do, a domain, but I, we're talking about something else. What is a DOM? So that's, for instance, uh, there's, the, the elements, the parts that make up, say, this timeline mm -hmm. piece, mm -hmm. like this whole thing is the HTML page, right? but this timeline specifically has elements to it. and Like an array that, or something? Is that what we're talking about? Like the array that describes it's it? It's like or? a structure, um, a specific structure to certain elements within a page. Is it like JSON and, a structure? I mean, when you say structure, you have to uh, think of XML and JSON and stuff like that. It's like the document the, object the skeleton. model. Yeah, I haven't played yeah. too much with document object model. Maybe we should have a conversation about that sometime, Jay. I don't know if you do any DOM scraping, whatever that is. Sounds kind of nasty, naughty. Kyle, no DOM scraping. Um, yeah, but yeah, I think we would have to get a, a test case, and I just can't think of one off the top of my head. All right, well, if someone comes up with that, that'd be an interesting conversation, but it will blow all the junior uh, detectives up, and yeah. they'll we'll have to scrape Bunny and Megan off the ground. They'll be dead. That would be unsa un un unsatisfactory, but it would be interesting because that's document object model. Yeah, I don't uh, play with that, right? I do other stuff. I could tell you about uh, <laughs> I could tell you about visibility rules for airline transport pilots in a helicopter at 500 feet in Class B airspace, but I cannot uh, tell you about uh, document object model. So there you go. All right, well, um, all right, any other final questions we have? Because we want to say thank Jay for doing a great job. Uh, hopefully we can get more awesome demos. We'll see you back Monday. want to thank Dave, Jonathan. Very good, Jay. You did a great job. Appreciate it. All right, everyone, and we'll catch you Monday. Thanks. the quarterback great read good patience more importantly great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance and that's all you can ask for oh. trying to rally down 10 925 to go here in the fourth short motion by Amendola from the left Brady takes the shot goes snap stands in throws it left for Amendola reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10 Ooh. rolling to the nine oh. slightly behind him again he makes the grab